Hello and welcome to Zen Divorce TV. Today I'm talking with the lovely Monica Castanetto. Hello. Hello Monica, Hello, lovely everyone. to have you here today <laughs> again. Thank you. It's great. <laughs> and um, today um, Monica is going to talk to us about change um, and how we need to know ourselves, know a little bit more about ourselves before we can actually make the right changes to get a life we love. Mm. Now, tell me a little bit more about why we need to know a bit more about ourselves before we can make that change, Monica. I'm really curious mm -hmm. about that. <laughs> yeah, it sounds a little bit like a self-indulgent pursuit, doesn't it? it Where does. we'd spend some time understanding who we are and what's important to us and why would we ever do that. But actually, that's a thing that changes over our lifetime. There are some things that stay with us, like our deep values, like things that we hold important, like integrity or loyalty or love mm. or whatever that is for you. But other things, priorities, in our life tend to change. So the things that were important to us when we were 20 are not the same things that are important to us when we're 50. The things that were important to us when we were a mother and a wife perhaps will not be the same things that are important to us or not entirely the same when we are single again, perhaps mm. after a divorce. Yeah. And so who we are and who we feel that we are and who we truly are might change over a lifetime and uh, I am big on helping my clients create a life that they truly love and by that I don't mean that we all have to be superwoman and we have to do more and be better and you know fill our life with lots of stuff we just have to live a life that is right for who we are and that to me is kind of a recipe for, for happiness and for contentedness with what we've got. Okay. And so, Are you going to tell us a little bit more about how we can do that Yes, today? yes, yes. Because so okay. after we come out, for example, after a, a, a divorce or any kind of change that we want to make, it's really worth before we go on to say, okay, so how do I want to live now, to spend a bit of time thinking about who we are and and just to give you a few pointers about how you might do that, I brought here my very clever chart. I don't know whether how you can see it on the camera. I'm going to just put it there so you can see it's a, it's a rough shape of a flower. Um, but if you wanted to know, if you wanted to have the format, just uh, drop me a little email um, and, and I'll send it to you. And, and Margaret, I think you will, you will put my email at yeah. the end of, of yeah, the yeah. video. There'll be links at the end of the video and, and where you can get, get, a, uh, get a copy of this, the flower. So you can create your own flower that describes who you are at this moment in time. So remember, it's going to be a snapshot because it, it's likely to change over, over time. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I always help my clients draw out of themselves is like, what are your strengths? What are the things that you do really well? What are your talents? And again, we don't all have to be taking over the world and be a super talent, but we all have things that we know how to do well. It might be that we're a good listener. It might be that we cook really well. It might be that we appreciate music or colour. It might be that we're a fast walker. Mm. It might be, there might be internal things that we do really well, like for example, standing strong when things get difficult. Mm. So what are your strengths? Spend a bit of time thinking about those. And if you're struggling with that, you could think about a time in your life where you felt really good, really strong, where good things were happening to you, and then think about what were you doing that you do well that were helping this to come along, and that might trigger trigger some ideas. Mm. And it will also give you resources. If you're in a little bit of a difficult spot where you've, you know, you've just come out of the divorce and, and you know, this will beef up your confidence a little bit. And if you don't know what your strengths are, how about asking your friends? Mm. People that you trust to tell you the five things they believe you're good at and you'll be surprised at what you hear. It can be quite a healing, quite affirming experience to have that fed back to us. It can indeed because mm -hmm. sometimes we don't know, do we? We're so close mm -hmm. to ourselves, we just don't know what we are good mm -hmm. at. And sometimes it takes a friend to, to actually sit with us and go through mm -hmm. various things that they've seen that we're good at for us to appreciate that yeah. there are things we're good at because everybody is good at something, like yeah. you said. Yeah. And the strengths, you know, they'll be carrying you and you can build your next life upon them and let them mm. help you build your next phase of your life. The other thing is your challenges and you know you could call them your weaknesses if you wanted to be very direct but I like to think about them as your challenges. Mm. So the things that we struggle a bit yeah. in doing or in having or in you know they were not so good at. 
So I know that I can be quite copious. Margaret, you'll have to <laughs> stop me a little bit when I kind of go into too much detail. When I speak, you know, I can give people a lot of stuff. So I always have to kind of pull myself back a little bit. But what are your things that you struggle with? You know, maybe some people are not very good listeners and they know they could do a little bit more in kind of doing that. Yeah. Or maybe, uh, you know, we're not as good in asserting ourselves when we face a difficult situation. We tend to shrink away and go away and, you know, hide. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's a challenge. So, you know, you know what your challenges are and build your new life in a sympathetic way to that. And, um, you know, I think there's always a case also in building resources to help us get through our challenges a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Know that they're there, you know, not beat yeah. us up, but give ourselves a little bit of help to, to, to come through them. And it's just useful to know what they are. I think that's great because when you know what something is, then you can deal with it. Mm. And it's when you don't know mm. what's going on for you mm. that that's when, when the problems mm. come in, isn't it? Mm. So actually taking a bit of time and sitting down and working out what those challenges are. Mm. And again, you know, with, with, a, with a friend, if, if you, you can't really recognise them yourself, that will really help you mm. um, look at what you can improve on for the future so yeah. that you don't make the same mistakes again. Yes, yeah. And also how you want to build your life um, so that these challenges can be in there but that you can... You can, you know, have resources to, to be to, with them to appropriately with them. as well. My other bit is, what are my motivators? What, what motivates me to do stuff, to make a change, to, to, to go somewhere, um, to look at some things and do them differently next time? And that is, um, is very different for people. There's, some of us are more motivated by you know go getting a prize mm. get a carrot so if I dangle a little carrot yeah. in front of my nose um, you know that will help me uh, kind of do stuff perhaps that I'm, I'm normally not so motivated to do others prefer to avoid pain and that's a great motivator so um, trying to think of an example um, you know if I go for a walk then I'll allow myself maybe a cup of tea or, or a cookie or something that's the example for mm -hmm. for or maybe a healthier snack actually a lovely apple with cinnamon or something oh, like that wow, that, that could be a nice. motivator to actually kind of go and go for a walk yeah um and an example for you know trying for, for avoiding pain if i go to bed um an hour earlier then getting up next morning won't be quite as traumatic mm. as that and I'll avoid the pain of you know the alarm clock and and not being able to pry my eyes oh. open because I'm so tired so what, what is it that motivates you it doesn't have mm. to be reward or avoiding pain there could be yeah. other things it but could usually be it's around, somebody around saying that. to you you can't you won't be able to do that because that sometimes and then you go really watch me yes. yes you watch me yes. do it so it yeah. really is recognizing mm -hmm. those traits in mm -hmm. you in yourself so that you can put yourself in the best position mm -hmm. to be able to succeed isn't it yes. and everyone yes, is, is different yeah. so not not everything fits everybody yeah. so what are you like have yeah. a little think and and feel in the little petal of the flower if you feel like it. Another big thing that describes who we are is um, what do you love? And I like this. I think I believe personally that a life you love and a life that is right for you should be filled with a lot of things that you love. And of course we all have things that we don't love so much, mm -hmm. like the tax return is one of those things for me. I don't oh, know yeah, about you. Yeah, and we one. have to do them. But you know, I have a lady whom I absolutely love who comes and helps me with it every year. And mm -hmm. so, you know, try and, and do even the things that you don't love so well in a way that you love them a bit more. But most importantly, know what it is that you love that makes your heart sing, that fills you with life energy and have enough of that in the next life that mm. you're trying to create. And, you know, people sort of go on about finding your passion and then, um, you know, I don't know whether we all are so inclined to want to live a very passionate life. I mm. think a certain character of person suits that. Yeah. But I think if we go with just what you love, um, that'll ensure that you've got enough stuff in there to be happy with your life. Mm. Or what are you curious about? This is an idea from Elizabeth Gilbert who wrote Eat, oh, Pray, yeah. Love. Oh, yeah. And she says, I'm fed up with all these people who say, find your passion and why do we all have to be passionate? Isn't it just much more about what are you curious about? 
what is it that you would like to explore or have in your life going mm. forward particularly if it's a very different life you're going from being a wife and mother um, yeah. to maybe being a single person for a while and rebuilding that life as, as such so what is it you love mm. and what is it maybe that in your previous life you really really wanted to do mm. or you've been really interested in but you've had to put that yes. to one side yeah. um, while you brought up the family or while mm. whatever it was was going on and now suddenly you have time to actually actually pursue that perhaps mm. if that's that's what you want to mm. do so it's it's worth having a little think about that isn't it because yes. it might be you wanted to take up art and you can't do that with lots of children around well not not yeah. not um, seriously, mm-hmm. obviously they can join in, mm-hmm. but you might have wanted to go and paint a bit of a picture like we are here yes, at Strawberry yes. Hill. <laughs> Strawberry well, Hill House is just of amazing. A, of this lovely, lovely yeah. um, bench which was which was rebuilt uh, following plans from the 1700s. Actually, yeah, was yes. it? Yeah. It's just an amazing place. So I can imagine gorgeous, anyone wanting yes. to draw it or, yeah. or paint it. Yeah. So it might be that you feel that you want to do something like that. Yeah. So just just explore. Take time out to explore what mm. it is you, you, that it does m- make you mm. feel good. Feel, feel, it's the feel good factor isn't it yes. really feeling good yeah. so it's not necessarily and um, being deadly madly passionate it's yeah. just oh this really makes me feel good it might be a nice hot bath with some beautiful essential yes, oils in yes, it yes, yes. just something simple absolutely but, and actually yeah. I've learned from Rick Hansen who's another you know doctor in psychology and um, who's done a lot of also meditation studies and neuro neuroscience he uh, says that something that feels good most often is also beneficial for us mm. so um, you know th- there are other things that are beneficial like having compassion for somebody that might come with a bit of a bittersweet tinge if they're in a difficult place mm. so it's not always the case but most mm. often really things that feel good for you and good to you are also beneficial for you so go with that feeling notice when you love something notice when Mm. something just feels right because Mm. it's most likely going to be a good thing for you to to pursue so it's worth spending a bit of time thinking about what that is Mm. what do you love or what are you curious about what makes your heart sing Um, next petal what do you admire or who do you admire this is kind of is a bit of a deep one as well because mm. very often actually when I ask that question to my to my clients um, it just helps them acknowledge a little bit more some of the qualities they perhaps have in themselves because sometimes it's quite hard to sort of say well I'm really good at this or I admire that I kept my cool in that difficult situation the other day or I, I did this mm. really well because we don't want to be boasting and we don't want to be self-aggrandizing yeah. and be arrogant about things so the question who or what do you admire allows you to take that out of yourself a bit admire another person but also you know, very often these qualities you admire in others are qualities that you actually yourself mm. possess and maybe haven't quite owned up to because owning up to standing tall in your own strengths and good yeah. things is, is sometimes hard. So this could be a person that you admire. I admire Oprah Winfrey um, in the self-development kind of area. Mm. I really love how she talks to people, tries and to find out the, the things that really help us on in mm. our life journey and has dedicated a lifetime to that. Um, you might admire somebody else. It could be a public personality mm. or it could be somebody you know. It, it could, could be, be somebody in your family, yeah. could be a friend. Yeah. I admire how you really have an easygoing way <laughs> of getting people talking about what they love and capturing it on camera. And but I just love know, talking to people. Yes, yes. Um, and although I'm not doing a lot of and talking now, but I just enjoy yeah. actually. I'm mm. curious, and that's one of the things that you spoke about earlier in your da- in your Daisy mm-hmm. was um, you know being curious about something and being curious about what you do and finding out more about mm. what you do um, elicits a passion in me mm. because then that makes me feel great so yes, it, and it, it shows it, it radiates it's really interesting yeah. isn't it how, how it, it does work yes, oh, thank does. you I really feel so what do you admire or who yeah. do you admire and what if it's a public personality or a friend what are the qualities about them that you admire 
and it could be their standing power, it could be their empathy, it could be their loyalty, it could be how they really are good at finding practical solutions mm. and stuff. And that will show you as well uh, a bit more about what you value and what you want to build your next phase of your life upon. Really. And it could That's be their why. energy as well. Couldn't it could it? be their energy, yeah. Some yeah. people's energy really resonates with, mm-hmm. with others mm-hmm. and all different types of personality and mm-hmm. different energy mm. really resonates. So whose energy resonates with you Mm -hmm. you know is it enthusiastic Mm -hmm. that type of energy or is it a much more reserved energy Mm -hmm. and there's no judgment on that it's who you feel most comfortable with Mm -hmm. or the energy that you feel most comfortable with Mm -hmm. because that's the energy then that you will be able to work with isn't it yes and how can you find that perhaps in yourself it's very likely that if you're feeling drawn to a particular energy you might be able to find that in in yourself and bring that into your life as well and my um final one of the petals is what is your purpose? Now that's a really deep one and I often leave that to the end. What, what do you feel is your purpose in this life? Why are you here in this world, in this life? What are you here to do? Who are you here to be? How does your being in this world contribute to the world or to other people? Um, and that is probably not something, unless you've spent time before, you know, that you can uh, answer just like this. Oh, yeah, I think mm. my purpose is da 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 da. So for me, uh, it's taken quite a long time uh, of really experimenting and not so much trial and error, but just exposing myself to different things to see what else was in me that I could bring out mm. and then sort of see, well, how does this sit in the world? And um, I think often it is linked to, to our strengths and talents as well, how we bring those out into the world for our own benefit, because then we are in our own flow of, of expressing what we do mm. well, but for the benefit of other people, because most often, you know, what you do well will help somebody else. What I do well can help somebody yeah. else. It can just make the world, even in a small, in us, small little corner a better place so for me uh, I've uh, got into change consulting almost like by coincidence when I was younger not even knowing what that was Mm. ended up in a 10-year career that was very high powered where I learned a lot but where I kind of thought I need to do other stuff and bring out other things in me and after I did all that I came back to facilitating change there is something in me in my purpose in my essence which is about helping people move through phases where their life changes. There's something that I do really well, which is facilitate or catalyze, help you make that movement and that transition with more ease. There's something in me that just wants to do that. I used to get lots of people come to me, tell me their life stories and Uh have a chat to me and then say, this was a really good chat and I'm now suddenly really clear what I want to do, even before I knew what coaching was. So there's something in me about that, about sharing knowledge wisdom my own experience which is not a perfect experience Mm -hmm. is i'm in there with all of you going through my (laughs) changes and finding them hard sometimes but there's something in me that that points to a purpose of of sharing that and bringing that out into the world so you know be a bit Mm -hmm. um maybe just attentive and open and notice things about yourself and just kind of ask yourself every now and then what what is my purpose in the world because then if you can align that with the life you build for yourself that too is a is a a bit of a recipe for kind of inner inner peace and inner happiness because you'll you'll be very aligned with uh, your deep Reason deep reasons for isn't being it? here. It's almost like your core belief, yes. isn't it? Your real yeah. core, deep down. Yeah. And then I've yeah. got one final bit. It's a kind of purpley bit, sort of in the middle. So we've gone through the different petals, and they're really ways of describing who you are today and what 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 makes a picture, a snapshot of you. But you know, you could put any kind of descriptor really in the petal. You don't have to take mine. You can, you know, put put other things that describe you. Um, and let me know what those are. I'd be interested in what other kind of yeah, descriptors sure. are useful. What is at the centre, however, the kind of core of my, of my little flower there, are, are two things. And they are deeper things as well. They are what do you value? So what is really, really essentially important to you mm-hmm. in your life? And, and they're one 
single words, abstract words usually. Um, they are things like loyalty, they are things like integrity for me. I value creativity very highly, for example, that's one of my, mm. my core values. Empathy is um, a value of mine. Compassion mm. is something I... Freedom is one of Freedom is one of my top ones yeah. as well. It's interesting, yeah. you can put them in a, you know, in a ranking one to ten once you've got mm. your list of, of what those might be and really see because they will subconsciously and consciously drive your decisions they will drive how you mm. behave in life what you say yes or no to and how you build your life around you and it's important that a life you love respect your values and if you don't know how to get to those again think about um, important situations in your life where something important happened to you and it could be it could be when somebody was very ill and you were, you know, you had to make a decision whether you were just going to carry on being busy at work or whether you were going to take time off and help them. And there's no right or wrong and there's no judgment mm. on whether which of these two is the better decision. It's just what are your values? And if you value maybe love and compassion much, much higher than you know, earning your money, which is also a good value, mm. then you might take a break and go help that person. And if you value your own security, perhaps higher, and that's no judgment at all, that's just your kind of value system, which is valid, you know, mm. unless we go and murder people, that is not valid. So no. don't go and become an Definitely axe murderer. Definitely not. <laughs> it's not a good thing. But, you know, it's, it's more kind of what kind of person are you and what do you value? So from that incident in your life or from that... Mm thing that happened in your life you can draw what is more important is it more important you know to be empathetic or to earn my money and so, it's really important <laughs> talking yeah. about important yeah that you're um, honest with yourself on that because it's not what you should feel you should be thinking mm. or for the values that you should have it's your, the actual values that you have mm. and that doesn't mean to say if, if you find the values identify the values that you, you have aren't quite what you saw mm. that doesn't mean to say can't do some work on them and and yeah. and, and change them yeah. but really if you're not honest with yourself you won't be able to do the groundwork mm. to then actually build up this new life that you need that yes. you want this new change in your life yes. because it will be on a on a on, on a wobbly feet, diet, on yes. wobbly feet yes. won't yes, it? it will be yes. so so just be honest with yourself because there is no judgment whatsoever as monica said it is just this is who you are mm. um, but you don't have to stay that mm. person if mm. you don't want to no so exactly that, that's great you know and you know even um i didn't mean to make it sound very kind of you know one is very mon money and security driven and the other is all good and empathetic and so on but there mm. might be solutions in between mm. If you value your money very highly and your the security perhaps it brings or the freedom that it brings or mm. the maybe you value the commitment of going to work and don't want to, you know, there's things, what is it about money that we actually value? There's something yeah, underneath that. So money right. in itself yeah. is not a value. Yeah. Uh, but then um, there might be other ways that you can value that and honor that while still finding other ways of helping that person yes. and, and showing compassion. So it's never kind of black and white, but mm. it's really useful to understand what is it that you value. And then the very center of my flower is who are you in essence? And that's, wow, that's quite that's a difficult, amazing. that's another quite difficult, yeah. quite deep one. But if you had to describe yourself with one or two words, what would those be? And, uh, you know, I've had people saying I'm the soft rain on a green meadow or I describe myself as a gentle movement Aww. because I, I, I uh, that's what I feel my energy kind of is. And uh, sometimes it's, it's also a bit of a uh, pushier kind of movement. But, you know, sometimes it's kind of quite gentle and in a flow. And, and I do help other people move, which for some people is quite uncomfortable if they don't want to. Yeah. But those who do want to and come to me, I will do that gently and carefully. Um, and I feel that is kind of part of my essence. But, mm. you know, somebody uh, said I'm a shining... I'm some somebody shining out into the world. Oh, it, definitely. It can that be something poetic. Can really it can see be, that. you know, through through your eyes, and, you, and that's somebody your, observing your body that. Language. You know, You're just just so enthusiastic and sh and the light. Shot, light. You know, you light well, some up, people you say light they are light. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, so, what is it that you are in essence? Because 
it's not an analytical thing, you know, kind of if you're in essence and you're if you're in essence light, then you'll build a life that is like this. And if you're something else, mm. you build a life. Somebody might be depth or somebody might be, uh, you know, a, a, a beautiful meadow with lots of different colored flowers. Sometimes it might be mm. an image that describes yeah. you or a feeling that yeah, describes you. Or an animal, you. maybe. Or an animal, like a cat describe, or Yes, yes, yes. Horse, I know, certainly know a woman who says, I'm a, I'm a cat woman. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, or a unicorn. Yeah. So what is your essence? It could be something magic, poetic, something that gives you a feeling of who you are or what you are or of the essence that you are yeah. and that as well it'll kind of guide you very subtly in in creating the life you love so once you've got right. this picture it's your snapshot um you know that is something that you can use as your basis to start brainstorming okay if this is me what are the kind of things people activities that i want in my life that fit with this what are the ones that perhaps I should start letting go because they actually don't fit with this? And which new things do I want to introduce? And start creating a picture that suits, you know, if these are my strengths, how can I have situations in my new life where I can express those? Mm. If that is my purpose, in what kind of way of being or doing will, might I express that? Um, and really play with this, isn't it? Yeah. It's really about having, it's almost like playing with, with a new toy, mm -hmm. you know, you find all this information, like maybe get some post-its and, you know, put them up on the wall and yeah. just, just generally... I love post-its, yeah. So does, so, so does my wall. friend Jane, she loves post-its as well. <laughs> I'm a post-it um, woman, the more yeah. colourful the better. With, and that's the other thing, isn't it? Have different colours and, and really, yeah. you know, it's, it, be, it would be magic. Yes. You know, have a magic time yeah. and really spend some time on it. Yeah, and it won't come together, uh, you know, you kind of spend half an hour, you put one plus one together mm. and then two drops out your vision. It's not like that. It's more of a kind of intuitive mm. thing, but these are some prompts that will help things bubble up for you so just spending time away you know thinking reflecting in a light way not mm. in a kind of deep and heavy way sort of who am I along these lines or other lines that you might want to use and what does that mean for my life and then going away and doing other stuff mm. as well and then you might have an idea whilst you're doing the washing up and you go like yeah. actually that is my essence not no. the washing up but you know something <laughs> no, else. no not the washing up please <laughs> that might come up um you know maybe it's being thorough and careful and yeah. handling uh fragile things really well so mm. you're washing up yeah you know something yeah, very delicate a delicate glass or something and that might actually give you the idea that actually do you do that well in a figurative way as well so you know, you, it's a process, I think is what we're saying, I think that's we? right, Monica, yeah. and that's absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much for going through your, your, um, your what do you call snapshot it? Snapshot. Your snapshot. Of who you are. Your snapshot of who you are. In the form of a flower. Yeah. That's absolutely <laughs> lovely. Where, where can people get hold of this? Can we... Can we have a link to it? So I think it's not yet on the website. I could, if you want, I could put it on the website, or maybe people just drop me an email. Um, yes, and you if can you want perhaps, to, and I can um, kind of send it. Send yeah, it send to it you. through. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm always interested for people to share things as well when they get an exercise from me you know that so we make it a bit of a give and a take um if you let me know what you found or what it helped you do or you know what insight mm. it kind of helped you um that'd be fantastic i'd always kind of um love to know that and other than that i just help i, I just hope it'll help you uh, you know one step taking one step more towards the life that you want to live and knowing yourself better great well thank you so much monica thank you so you're f it's almost like flower power isn't it <laughs> it's a bit it's isn't great it? so um that's lovely of you to come today it's been absolutely great here at strawberry hill the, well, thank the, you for visiting me here the yes. rain has, has kept off yes. and the the sun is out so in, yeah. and we're here with this beautiful shell as we mentioned earlier <laughs> it's, just, it's just really lovely to be the here and then um, yeah so so we're ending now but at the end of the video there'll be a little page where monica Monica's email address and contact details will be there and if you just drop her an email and say you've watched the video and you really love a copy of the um, snapshot so that you can start working on your life then Monica will be happy to send it out to you. Fantastic. Oh by the way there's a, a I have a blog on my website. Oh, if you right. go on my website okay. in the top menu it's very easy to find there's a blog you click on that and then under the most read posts is one that is called the ultimate guide to changing your life oh that sounds good and it's a it's a series of six posts that kind of go through the steps you know of how you might do mm -hmm. that and step number two is the snapshot 
Oh, oh, you right. are. So there's a post oh, that about really that, so you'll, you'll find it there. But if you Google Monica Castanetto, uh, The Ultimate Guide to Changing Your Life, you might find it that way as okay. well. Okay. So well, yeah. I'll put the links in the, co uh, in the description Fantastic. under the video anyway, so you mm -hmm. can just click on those. Fantastic. So you can get to Monica's website. And um, we'd love to hear any comments that you've got. And please do like and share the video. And, um, you know, then we can get more people watching and they'll get more value out of it. And um, it will be great great for us as well because Fantastic. we love doing this yes. don't we yes. so um, we really want to know that we're making a difference yeah. with these videos and if there's anything that you feel that you'd like us to talk about um, let then know. just let us know yeah. and we can do mm -hmm. um, like somebody asked us to do something on how to trust again mm -hmm. after um, you know you've been in a relationship mm -hmm. and you find that the relationship has broken down because the other person's um, gone off with another another person mm -hmm. so it's it's building up the how to trust mm -hmm. again so yeah. so we're, we'll be doing that um shortly mm -hmm. um so if there's anything you'd like and and if you don't want to put it in the comments drop either of us an email and um we'll do it we you know keep everything confidential don't we we don't kind oh, of yes, let, let any, yeah. anybody anybody's name out if they yeah. don't want to so um yeah it'd be lovely thank you so much for watching thank you thank for you. watching thank you for listening bye 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 bye, bye, -bye.